In this episode, I speak to Simon Chan about the distraction economy. We discuss the seven components of the consistency pill and how anyone can be consistent in anything. Simon explains that business owners need to recognise that not only are they their own boss, but they're also their own employee. Consistency breeds success and trust from your employees and your customers. This is a great conversation on productivity and success. Now, Simon Chan is a consistency coach, speaker and author of the Amazon bestseller, The Consistency Pill, the seven step system to increase sales and transform your business. He helps network marketers earn a part time income of at least a thousand dollars a month by getting them to be consistent, defeat overwhelm and build a successful business online. Simon is best known as the host of MLM Nation podcast, the hash one network marketing podcast that features in-depth interviews with over 700 top income earners. Listen up to the rest of the conversation and discover why people are waiting for you to quit. The Maverick Paradox Magazine. The Maverick Paradox Magazine is for the pathologically curious. Written by a swagger of socialized mavericks who are divergent thinkers, the magazine tackles the biggest issues affecting maverick leaders today. You might be a business owner or a leader within an organization who wants to have your thinking challenged, to be exposed to a diversity of thought, or to learn from diverse experts in their fields. If so, the Maverick Paradox magazine is for you. Join the swagger at themaverickparadox.com and engage in the conversation. And today, our guest is Simon Chan. Hi, Simon. Hey, Judith. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor to be here. Oh, thank you. It's good to have you here, for sure. Before we kick off, though, tell us who you are. Who am I? That's a great question. Where do I start? I guess I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a lover of Jesus Christ. And I've been, I've been an entrepreneur for the last 19 years. I got started my business career back in two, November of 2003. And uh, to make a long story short, I built a successful direct selling business. And then in the last, uh, as an active distributor, and then in the last nine years, uh, I had a distant, little change in purpose where I wanted to make a bigger impact. I felt God gave me an impact to uh, really teach and coach others, a gift to doing that. And so I've been a full-time business coach for people, uh, mostly in the direct selling profession since 2013. Brilliant. That's really, that's really good. Um, so I understand that part of growing this business that you have, you've got this, what can I say, this concept called the consistency pill? What is that? <laughs> okay, yes. Well, you know, the, the thing that changed me, you know, when I got started uh, as an entrepreneur and I was doing it part-time, working at home, I struggled for many months. And the reason wasn't because of my, wasn't because of work ethic. I actually wanted to work. It also wasn't because of the bad products. It really was because of the lack of consistency, right? So meaning that even though I worked hard, I will only work at maybe one Monday, Tuesday, I'll get fired up and then I get distracted and then do a little bit on a Thursday, and then I get distracted by the weekend, and then I never had any momentum, right? So in anything, I always, I have a podcast as well. This is the number one question I ask, and over 700 people have said this, that the number one skill you need, and this is not something you're born with, it's a skill, and that skill is consistency. Because it is like the mother of all skills. It doesn't matter what you want to do, right? It, it, it could, whether it's in sports or piano or music or in business, um, or you want to be a speaker, or you want to be a writer. If you are not consistent, you're never going to be successful. You're never going to get good at it. But the good news is if you are consistent and focus at it every day, eventually consistency creates mastery. You're going to be good at what you do. And that was for me. Now, I... I didn't have any discipline in the beginning. I didn't have consistency, struggled. And eventually, it was, it was a mentor that came in, uh, into my life in early 2004 that really pushed me hard and held me accountable and to do what it takes, like doing the things that I didn't even like to do, like making sales calls, reaching out to people, following up with people for the fourth time, right? I didn't want to do that. But once I got 
into the routine and the schedule where every day I was showing up, doing what was important, I started getting good at selling. And this is someone from, I never knew how to sell. I never sold anything. Started becoming actually pretty good on the phone. And I started making sales. And then the rest is history. And I've seen this over the years where, like in today, in 2022, with more knowledge than ever, right? It's almost like knowledge is a commodity. Like you want to learn anything, you can go on YouTube and find it out and learn it. Right? There's tons of stuff out there. You can go to TikTok, Instagram, Reels. There's so much knowledge out there. But it's a commodity. It's the ones who can apply that knowledge consistently that's going to win. And it's, that's especially important in this day of a, what I call the distraction economy, where we're constantly distracted with new ideas, shiny object syndromes. If you're all over the place, you're never going to make it. But if you can stay, choose one strategy and stay focused at it, you are going to be good. Yeah, thank you for that. I think... I think that's particularly true for people who run their own businesses because I think when you work in corporate, you know, you, you, you join a corporate and then you have nothing to do like in the first week, isn't it? Because, like, you know, someone else is dictating what you're doing, aren't they? You're on some sort of induction or something like that. And then before you know it, your day is filled with meetings and routines and, and it becomes easy to be consistent because you're – it's not like your schedule moves you around. And then when you work for yourself, you don't have that kind of regime around you, doesn't it? So it's hard to be consistent. And I certainly recognise what you were saying in your early days of working really hard for a couple of days a week and it's kind of rewarding yourself by spending three days going, oh, yeah. and, I'm going to the gym, I watch TV. <laughs> and then that was my problem. You know, Judas, I, like, I, I had a corporate job and I worked really hard because I was used to taking orders from a boss. Right? Mm -hmm. My boss told me to do this, I'll do it. And I will always show up. Now, like you said, when you finish a project early, you may relax a little bit. But I never knew that when you become, when you work for yourself, you need to find that discipline, that consistency within yourself. And uh, yeah, that was the turning point. I started off like I didn't have that consistency, right? I would just mm -hmm. do show up when I need to show up. And when you work for yourself, we like to be our own boss. But what people fail to realize is you also have to be your own employee. You have to wear two hats. I like that. Right. That's really good. And, and the boss, the boss, we all like to be our own boss, but someone's got to do the work. Like the boss <laughs> comes in, right? Someone's got to do the dirty work. Someone's got to meet the sales call, the follow-ups. And especially if you first start off, you got to do everything. Yeah, the boss, yeah, you, yeah. comes up with the vision, with the inspiration, with the ideas. But the employee has to go execute. The employee's got to go and make the sales. And that's where, you know, we talk about the consistency pill. If anyone, people are struggling to be consistent, uh, the reason I wrote the book is anyone actually can be consistent if they follow seven components. Uh, if you follow these seven components, you will hit your goals. If you don't follow any of it, any or miss any of these seven components, you're always going to fall short of any goal that you set. Okay, then. Stop teasing me. What are the seven? So, Seven are very simple. Number one, and by the way, everyone's consistent. I always talk about uh, people say, I'm not consistent. I think like, everyone's consistent. Uh, for example, we all consistently took a bath or shower in the last 24 hours, right? Mm -hmm. If you're listening, you did. You all consistently, uh, some of you, you consistently make dinner, right? Or you consistently exercise. We all have some type of consistency. And if you look at this, I'll talk, I'll talk about these seven components. It's very simple. You apply all seven of these to whatever you're doing. So number one is a checklist. Right, the number one reason why goals fail is not because of the lack of desire, it's the lack of clarity, and they're not following these seven components. So the number one is the checklist gives you clarity on what you exactly need to do. So if you want to grow what you're growing right now, uh, if you do what will you do, what is exact things you have to do every single day? The checklist is the foundation of any type of system. So number one is a checklist to know what you need to do. Number two is create and schedule the time. Right? We have infinite, you're listening to this podcast, you have unlimited ambitions, but you know what? We're not getting even, not even one extra second to make those things happen, right? You really have the budget, create the sky, carve out the time, say no to certain things and put it in the calendar. You have to create a routine. Like if you access, if you, going back to a showering, right? Taking a bath, there's a routine. You either shower or take a bath in the morning or some of you take a bath, shower at night. If you exercise consistently, there's a routine. 
right? You don't say, I want to exercise whenever I feel like it. No, because those people, they don't exercise consistently. You have a routine. Same thing is you got to create a schedule at a time. And the turning point for me was at that time on my job at 4.30 p.m., I could spend 15, 20 minutes just following up with a couple of people, sending out a couple of reach outs, right? So number two is you got to create and schedule the time focused on whatever goal you want to do. Focus on that checklist. Component number three is you got to determine the strategy. What's the strategy? How are you going to do this? Are uh, you going to do uh, maybe TikTok dance videos, get people laugh at you, and then you connect with those people who like your posts, like your, your reel, or do Instagram reels, or you're going to do uh, LinkedIn and reach out to people who worked in the same industry as you did, or you're going to do Facebook Lives, YouTube, whatever there is, or maybe just go to your chamber of commerce, do fairs to promote what you're selling. What is the strategy? You got to be clear on that because your strategy is going to determine component number one, the checklist. Number four is choosing your environment. What's the environment? Uh, we all you know, have days where we're tired from a long day at work. We just want to relax. That probably environment, maybe your living room is probably not the best place for you to work. You got to choose an environment that motivates you, inspires you. Uh, a lot of times I get my creativity when I walk my dog in the neighborhood. I have a beautiful home office. I don't get much creative work done. But once I'm out there, I get creative. I go to my backyard. I meditate. I get creative, right? Your environment. What's the environment? Music. Is another part of the environment where if you play, like Judas, if I played a certain song, it will, it will immediately bring you back to your secondary school days, right? It's like, you know, we all have that song that gives us goosebumps. It's the same thing. Choose a song that inspires you. Like if you're struggling with consistency, play a song and immediately it will get you to do what you need to do. It's like when I uh, exercise and today while I was working out doing pull-ups and stuff, I play the same song every time I lift weights. Any type of weight training, I play the same song on repeat track. Right? I play it 30 times. Just because repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. Right? It goes back. But once, it's like conditioning dogs. Like if you play a certain bell, the dog would do something. Humans in many ways are the same thing. We get conditioned. Choose a song. Right? That, that's part of the environment. Uh, number five, component number five is tracking. You need to track your performance. If you don't track your performance, how do you know how well you're doing? In terms of reaching that goal. Right? How well you, what do you know in terms of how you're doing in that checklist? Are you working towards the, your goal or moving away from the goal. Tracking is so important. The late Peter Drucker, business guru, said, what doesn't get measured doesn't get tracked. Com uh, component number six is your toolbox, using tools like the calendar, uh, using a timer to set an urgency. Like, for example, a 10-minute timer. I have 10 minutes to check my emails. Afterwards, I have to stop. Because if you don't have that timer, we can spend all day checking emails. And then component number seven is accountability. Uh, we all needed some type of accountability because we're humans. We tend to slack off. If you have someone accountable, you are going to show up and stick to what you sh should be doing. So those are the seven components, Judas, of the consistency system. Those are the seven components of the consistency system. Thank you for that. Are these in order? Are these in order or are they just the seven things you must do? Um. They, they don't need to be in order, but you definitely need to implement all of them, okay. right? So if you have, um, for example, if you're doing all six of them, the first six, but you don't have accountability, you're probably not going to be consistent because you're going to human and you slack off, right? If you have all six of them, but you don't um, track your performance, you're probably not going to get close to your goals, right? So you do, they don't need to be in order, but you do need to use all seven. And I think if someone's getting started, uh, the first you want to be consistent, whatever you do. I think the first thing is you got to be number one's checklist. Be clear on what you need, actually need to do to help you achieve your goals. And number two is you have to create and schedule the time. All right. So whether it's writing my book or being on this podcast or doing any or exercising or doing baseball, my boys, it's got to be in the calendar. If I don't create and schedule the time, it's not going to happen. And then the rest of it, you can apply the, the other five components. So do you always do a checklist? Absolutely. If you don't do a checklist, it's like, you know, Judas, do you ever go grocery shopping without a checklist? You know what ends up happening, right? You end up buying all types of stuff that you didn't, you end up wasting all type of money and stop buying stuff that you didn't even plan to buy. And often, if you're like me, because I'm, I'm a bad shopper, I forget the stuff that I wanted to buy. So... You definitely need a checklist. Also, the check when you have a checklist, it takes it off your mind. 
right? So your mind can be focused on creativity and strategy and different things or making sales. You don't have to worry about it. You shouldn't be thinking about what you have to do. You should, all you have to do is just look at a checklist and, you know, autopilot and you execute. So the reason I asked about that is because one of the things that I completely struggle with is a list, a list of to-dos. And it's weird. And I struggle. I, it's weird because I struggle with the list. It's like the list is controlling me. What I do is if I have something to do, I immediately get my calendar and I schedule the, the time to get it done. So uh, I've got a report to do. It's going to take me I don't know, three hours to do it. Um, I will schedule in a diary the three hours to do it. Or if it's a larger project, I might split it up over a number of days with a deadline and whatever. So that it's in the diary. And I, and I then run um, by my diary. So rather than a list of stuff that's not going to get done, everything that needs to be done is in the diary over the period of time it takes to do it. So I just wake up in the morning, look at the diary. Oh, here's two hours for me to concentrate working on that. And I work to the diary. And... Um, I remember a long time ago I was in a book by uh, John Elliott called uh, Maverick Mindset, The New Science of Exceptional Achievement. I think that was the book. And he talks about uh, the psychology around checklists and where it came from. And from memory, I think he was saying that the research it was done um, by people who were not good at achieving, so they were subnormal in achievement, and the checklist brought them to average. It wasn't really designed to make people above average. Um, and I guess looking at your list, I think that I do probably the first two in consult, in together, because I think if I look at, is it important? Is it is it something that should be done? You know, oh, yes then let me schedule time to do it and then yeah. I'll do it from there rather than a list. And maybe it's because I, I observe people running the list and they never, they never get their stuff done or the things on the list aren't important stuff. There's stuff that they should do. Anyway. Yeah. Well, no. you know what, what you do is, is brilliant. You basically, your calendar is your checklist, right? Yeah. Like, so when you wake up, like when you, what are you going to do tomorrow? Like you basically, you don't create a special section. Your checklist, your calendar. You look at your calendar. Oh, I got to do this at this time. I got to spend this amount of time. That's as long as it's, you, you're clear what it means. Like you, you're clear on what you need to do. Like you're not going to bed like, oh, what am I going to be doing tomorrow? Yeah, you know exactly. I review it before I go to bed. I'll look exactly. at exactly. Look at tomorrow's exactly. diary. Is that still something that needs? To, and if I have to move something, I literally will move it. It doesn't come off. It's yeah. And, and you're using your time, using your time wisely. Right, because you're not doing it just for the sake of doing it. And in, in, in the book, I thought you'd talk about the how to prioritize your checklist. Uh, if for you, your checklist, you're very strict about it. If it's not important, it's not going to be in the calendar. So yeah, you kind of yeah, weeded yeah. it. You weeded out everything already. So what? How you spend your time tomorrow is determined by the calendar. Yeah, you make me feel better now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, I'm very much kind of, and I think it comes from my uh, corporate days when you used to have so much work to do and so many you have to, so many meetings that the only way to do to do it all would be to schedule over a period of time on how things done and then run by run by the calendar um yeah. okay uh, yeah. well, you, uh, i want to add one more thing you talk about people who uh, have all these checklists and don't get anything done it's mm -hmm. because they add or they feel like they have to get everything done right Normally, before you go to bed, and you, you're doing this already, Judas, because you look at your calendar. And for those who are not doing what Judas is, here's a tip. You just look at what all the stuff you have to do and prioritize number one, two, three. What's the number one most important thing you need to do? And then after that, what's the second most important thing? And number after that, what's the third most important thing? And then you only work on number two after you're done with number one. So even if you just do one thing the entire next, tomorrow, one thing. It's still good because you got the most important thing done. And basically, that's what you're doing, Judith. You're looking at your calendar. The, the, the things that rank lower in priority, they're not there because they, they're not even on your calendar. Yeah, so you they're not there. Right. <laughs> so think, that's a great way to do it. Yeah, I, I do use life checklists, but they're very rare. They're only if you've got a specific um, project. So, like, if I'm 
so like when I design like a new website or something and I'll do the website and then as I go through and review it I'll write I'll have the things that need you know the snagging that needs to be done yeah you know, remember to connect this to this remember to and I'll write a checklist for that because that's a discrete project and you need to make sure all of the stuff are done if you know what I mean but yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do a to-do list for tomorrow because for me it seems like a weird thing to do especially when you've got things on the list that you're going to do anyway yeah and you're not going to forget to go shopping if you if you just go shopping why is it on the you know why is that on the list because you need food so <laughs> maybe that's just me being weird no, I think it's just, you know, we all have like lists. Uh, I have my checklist, probably a hundred items more, but I only do what's most important. I, I just put it there so I don't forget about it, right? But I'm not doing them because they're not important. I may do them next month or I may never even get to it. But what I mostly focus on is the top three things. So someone's uh, hitting yeah. those three things that me, and those three things that determine my strategy. Like, for example, if I want to hit a certain type of income by the end of the month, well, how I'm going to generate that income? And oh, well, I got to do this. I got to go sell a product. I do a promotion. I got to, and then that determines the checklist. I like it. So, how do people, so is, is doing those seven things make things consistent, or is there something else that needs to happen? For consistency to take place. No, if you don't hear about mindset or this is all tangible stuff. There's nothing about the mind or anything. Well, yeah, I, the you know, in terms of mindset, it starts with number one. Is you have to see. I believe everything starts with the mind, right? So mm -hmm. it starts with you. What you say to yourself. If you say to yourself, "I'm a consistent person," or "I'm getting more consistent each day." Right, yeah. so maybe you're the most in inconsistent person. But you say, oh, "I'm not consistent. I can't do this. That's not for me." Then you're already lost already, right? But if you say to yourself, "I'm I'm getting a little bit more consistent today," yeah, maybe not much, but I'm living more than yesterday. I'm I'm living more consistent. If you keep saying that to yourself, I'm the person who gets a little bit more consistent every day, and you say that to yourself, you find yourself going out there doing small little things that can make you more consistent. You change the way you see yourself. You know, I I talked about. You know, if someone who wants to uh, get into an exercise routine, start exercising consistently, does it help the person if the only, and this is a person who's never exercised ever, okay, and they're really out of shape, they really need to do something for their health and move their bodies. So they, they go to the gym just for five minutes. Then they may take 20 minutes to drive, to commute, go to the gym for five minutes, do one, two things, and then leave immediately. And then, but he does it for three, four days in a row. Does it help them? And, you know, sometimes when I ask the question, some people, oh, it doesn't help them at all because five minutes, what type of workout can you get? But mm -hmm. the, the, here's the key. The secret is it does help because all of a sudden that person who shows up for four, even though he only worked out for five minutes, he goes and leaves, he starts seeing himself differently. He's seeing himself, oh, I'm a person getting him in shape. I'm a person who's committed to my health. And magically, all of a sudden, the five minutes will start becoming seven minutes and become 10 minutes. And then like three six months, three to six months down the road, the person's in the gym for what, an hour a day, right? We always act consistent to how we see ourselves. And there's also a saying I teach is like, things always happen twice, first in the mind and then in reality. So if you see yourself as, oh, I can't do it, and that's what you're going to get. If you see yourself, well, I'm the person who's getting a little bit better today, and that's what's going to happen. And I know there's always people that say, well, the positivity, that woo-foo is woo-foo, that doesn't work. It's all hocus-pocus, whatever you call it. But you know what? Negativity, well, positivity doesn't guarantee success. That's true. But negativity guarantees failure. So you might as well be positive. Well, like how that. you say to yourself is so important. So tell me, what are the three C's. The three C's, that's great. So especially, you know, um, as an as entrepreneur who's starting new, you may not have results. Just use venture to your own venture, start working out. You may not have the results. You may not have the testimonials. So sometimes people feel like, oh, how can I be successful if I don't have those? Well, people buy three C's. And if you're doing any type of selling, number one is buy, they're buying your change. How have you changed? Right? So change could be just not just the result of the product, whatever you're selling, that you maybe you're using, you have a positive change, but a change in your habits, 
change in your attitude, change in your your vision, right? So maybe you used to just, hey, I'm going to work. In, I'll, I'll give you an example. Maybe you used to work in corporate America. I did as well. You just oh, I'm going to work hard in corporate ladder and rely on my bonuses and slowly move up the ladder. That was your your vision. And now you said, oh, my vision is to change the world. My vision is to teach people how to be a maverick, right? How to have these ideals, how to have these philosophies to be a better leader. You change your vision, your outlook in life, that will get people's attention. That will start attracting followers. That will get people to stop buy, start buying into what you have. Also, your your change could be changing uh, habits. You used to maybe watch the tube, watch TV, and now you are listening to podcasts to learn you start reading books. You used to never read a book. Now you're reading to improve yourself. Hey, that'll get people's attention. Your change, right? Um, your commitment. How committed are you? Like I shared with you, when I first started, I wasn't very committed to my business. That's why no one was interested. They're like, oh, you know, this is like a flash in a pan. Simon will stop doing it. He's going to quit. He's going to fail. But if you commit and show up all the time, you'll get people's attention. You know, for example, uh, I always teach my coaching clients this. If you just started and, and you're learning something on a weekend, just say you're reading a book or you're attending a course or learning, listening to a podcast like such as the Maverick podcast, just share. Like, I'm so grateful for the podcast teaching me how to be a better entrepreneur, better leader in my community. I love this. Just sharing that, right? Um, like the Maverick, the Maverick paradox. Just sharing that, just doing an Instagram story, a Facebook post. People are wondering, hey, the weekends, it's the summer now. People should be relaxing. Why are you listening? Why are you learning? They'll get, they'll, that would raise eyebrows and get people curious. Like, what are you actually doing? And the last thing is, your, 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 you know, we're talking about change, your commitment, and your consistency, how you show up. If you're not showing up every day to do what you're doing, that's not going to convince people, right? But if you show up all the time, even if you're new, they'll be like, wow. You're really destined. You're really convicted. You really believe in what you're doing. That's going to start getting people to pay attention to what you have. Yeah, I like that. That's something I've never thought about before, really. The power of sharing your own learning journey benefits you as well as others. I haven't thought about that before. Yeah, because people are... People follow you, right? Especially on social media. They may not comment. They might not like. And the social media is like a must for any person that's an entrepreneur. Uh, they may not like. They might comment. But they're watching you, right? So yeah. the, the longer you show up and the, just the fact that you're committed. Just think about it. If I told you I started a business, but I'm never talking about it, then they, all right, okay, I, you're, you're probably not very convinced. But because ultimately, people are buying you. Yeah. Right, people are yeah. buying you, and the more you invest in yourself, in your education, in your experience, your for example, you're learning, reading books, you invest in yourself. That makes people want to buy you more, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this. Like a company, if it's investing its employees, investing in research and development, you makes you want to invest in that company. The same thing with people as entrepreneurs. People are buying you, so the more you let people know you're investing in yourself, they'll get people to buy you. You know what, the way you talk about it is a way to cover all the three things that you said about the three C's. Because people can see the change, but if you're doing that kind of stuff, you're changing exponentially, should be anyway. The fact that you're sticking with it shows something about your personal commitment and your commitment to a cause. And the consistency is also showing that you're someone that can be relied on to to do the thing that they say they're going to do yeah you know i'll give you an example i'll give you an uh let me take a step back because i was actually just looking at this up right so when i was um when we reached out to be if have me on the show like a lot of people asked me to be on the show and stuff and i, I have to use my time i have to be um careful with how I spend my time because I like to talk a lot and I like to be on everywhere but is it worth it? I went to your show right? The Maverick Paradox and you've been consistently now the average podcast lasts six episodes yeah. and Judith you've been podcasting since December 5th 2017 where your first episode I'm like this woman must be pretty successful she knows what she's doing on because if she wasn't she was stopped a long time ago right? That's an example of people buying your commitment your consistency that people are judging you. Now, if, you, if you're just starting out, it's a lot harder. But it, because most people, a lot of people are waiting for people to quit. So as long as you keep showing up, 
that gets people's attention, especially nowadays where everyone can do something so quickly. Everyone can put a podcast really easily. You can, the technology is there. It's so easy to put a podcast, but can you keep showing up every single day? When even when you, I'm sure Judas, there was days where you didn't feel like it, but you still showed up. That's what impresses yeah. people. And you, if you want to attract successful people in your life, that is even more and more important. I love. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate appreciate that. Um, and it makes me feel like it's 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 worth continuing because <laughs> you're right. Because you know, started off in 2017 being uh, by you know by weekly, and then it was and then weekly, and now it's twice a week. And you're right. There are times when you're like, I don't feel well. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm really busy. I've not any sleep, or and like as you said, like through the first few months of COVID, when people weren't traveling to work, and then the listenership just drops off the cliff because there were more important things to worry about than listening to a podcast. Yeah, you know, and I seriously thought, should I continue with this? And then uh, because compared to what, what the numbers were, there just weren't any listeners in comparison to what was before. And then I thought that my commitment and my reason for doing this hasn't changed. So I will continue. And eventually people will come back and start listening. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And I think, you know, talking about being a maverick, uh, being different, it's like, successful there's, there's so many days where i podcast and like you don't feel like doing it right but successful people do things that unsuccessful people don't that's one of my first mentors taught me like they show up regardless you keep showing up even on days you don't feel like showing up you show up and and, and those days are difficult it's difficult a lot of times but the only thing you have that keeps you going is your vision like like you said why you started is your purpose and that vision basically takes you along the ride that you're going to keep showing up regardless you like it or not. Mm. And I love what you said there. Well, I'm not sure if I, if I love it, but I appreciate what you're saying. I've never thought of it before, that people waiting for you to quit, I have never thought of that as a concept. It's quite a yeah, I think a lot of people... In a way, though. <laughs> it is, I mean, well, that's because it's, um, that, you know, that's what people see. Right. Like we all know many, many. How many, for example, we know way more people that said, I'm going to go and get in shape this year at the New Year's, New Year's resolutions. And then they quit by February mm -hmm. than people who actually stuck along and did it. Mm -hmm. right? We know st everyone can think of, oh, I'm going to get on a diet and they stopped. I'm going to change my eating habits. And then they stop. We very, we very rarely know someone that actually stays, stays with it. So if you are the one that actually stays with it, people are immediately impressed by that because just the fact that you've been doing it all along and the fact that most people are not consistent we're like most people are not consistent works to your advantage because as long as you're consistent it's like wow you must be good it's just like you know what even if i didn't know anything about your business Judith, well she must be successful because most people will stop by now but she's been doing this for five years five years of podcasting she must be successful now i don't even know anything about your business where you how well you're doing but I'm like, well, you must be successful because the other people I looked at, they stopped. I know a lot of podcasts that start, started after pandemic, after like I think the average is six episodes. Some people go for six months, they stop. But you keep going. She must be good. Right? Because most people out there are not consistent. So if you can stay consistent, you immediately stand out. You're at the maverick. You stand out among the rest of the people. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. And I think when you're thinking about um, sales, as you said, is, well, in two ways, if you're like an entrepreneur and you're looking for people to look into buy your services, they want to see a track history. You know, unless you've got a very good story, they don't want to buy from something untested or that they how long they've been doing it. So like a lot of people uh, pivoted into different areas but didn't have the right story that come with it. So it seems a bit weird. One minute you're doing this, then you're doing that. I don't understand the linkage between the two. And if you're a leader in an organization, your employees want to be able to see a consistency because they want to see, they want to be able to predict your response to something. You know, if, if something's going wrong, 
and they don't know if you're going to, you know, start yelling and shouting or whether you're going to ask them, you know, help them fix it, they're less likely to go to you because they don't know, they don't know what your response is, but you're not predictable in that response. Yeah, I think everyone starts out that way, right? Every entrepreneur, every leader started out with nothing. And mm. so it all goes back to acting confidently. You have to act like as it is. And my mentor first taught me this, like, so Simon, you got to be before you become. So what do you mean by be? Like, uh, how can I be someone, be a leader and, and when I don't even have any results? We said, well, look at a leader that you look up to. Uh, what would you say about them? Well, they normally, they're energetic. They, are, uh, they have integrity. They, are, they have a smile, right? And they show up all the time. They do what they say they're going to do. And he said, well, they're consistent. I said, good, Simon. Well, start acting like that. If you act like that, people will ultimately start believing in you. And then you ultimately will get your first result. Your first, you start building on that track record. But every leader out there, they start with zero. Right, including myself and mm -hmm. you, or mm -hmm. Elon Musk, right? Like even talking about Elon Musk right now, recently he's been in the news uh, about buying Twitter, right? What track record does he have in terms of social media, right? None, but mm -hmm. they're buying him from his past, from his yeah. confidence, his vision. Uh, well, you can say he started Tesla and SpaceX. Well, great, but what experience track record do he have in terms of, you know, space, zero? And in fact, for long, many years, space, I think for seven years, SpaceX couldn't send a rocket to the, into space without blowing up. He struggled for seven years. Tesla had a lot of issues. He was never in the car business. So what track record did he have? But right? it's his confidence. So you can go back, well, he started PayPal. Well, before PayPal, he had no track record. Everyone starts with zero. But mm -hmm. it is about being that leader, acting confidently, believing that vision. And so if you're listening to this right now, you want to be that leader, my point is, Look at someone you look up to, and you can just start. You may not have the credibility results, but you can always copy and start being what that person is. If they have high energy, go be high energy, right? They always have to walk around with a smile confidently. You can walk around and smile confidently. Start acting like that, and you can start having people listen to you. And, and then you will ultimately find the it's about timing, making that sale, finding the right person at the right time. You will get the right person at the right time. And there, that's your first track record, first result. And then you build up on that. Excellent. This is brilliant. I'm so pleased that you've come on the show, Simon. Oh, thank you for having me. I always like to talk and share. Uh, you know, it's awesome. We live in a time that, you know, there's a lot of challenges. But we still, you know, thanks to technology, you, we can create something out of nothing. I mean, that's what's exciting, yeah. right? We, we can create something out of nothing. You had an idea, Judas, you created a podcast, and now we're connected. I had an idea, I created a book, and we're connected, right? We can create something out of nothing, but it all comes back to you got to consistently show up. And consistently be, and we talk about being that person, being that leader, you know, you got to be before you become. If you only do that when people are watching you, that's not going to work. Because you got to start, you really got to be that internally, showing up consistently, being that leader, and then you will attract the followers and you will get the results. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you out there for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Simon as much as I enjoyed having it. The Maverick Paradox. Judith Germain is an author, speaker, consultant, mentor and trainer and the leading authority on Maverick leadership. She is the founder of the Maverick Paradox, which supports organizations to enhance their leadership capabilities and to help business owners develop and grow their businesses. Judith enables individuals, business owners, and organizations to improve their impact and influence. She is also HR Zone's leadership columnist, an international online radio host, and her expert opinion has appeared in national, international, and trade press.